Hi, this is Dr. Jenny Byrne. I'm an adult psychiatrist at Cognitive Psychiatry of Chapel Hill. And today I wanted to take a few minutes and talk about what you should do if you think a loved one might be suicidal. So suicidality and suicide is a big topic. Um, it gets a lot of press in the media. Uh, it has a lot of uh, shock value. It's very difficult for people to understand. So I think it's worth taking a moment to kind of understand how suicidality looks in the context of being clinically depressed. So a clinically depressed person is suffering. They are depressed. Often they have physical symptoms, low energy, not eating well, not sleeping well, um, feeling agitated, irritable, low energy, hopeless, feeling kind of worthless or a lot of guilt. So in this state of suffering, they often have thoughts of death or dying. And when you're wondering or worried that your loved one might have these thoughts, probably the best way to approach it is just to say something like, you know, I see that you've really been struggling. Are you having thoughts of death or dying or thoughts that life is not worth living? And try to make it as non-judgmental and kind of neutral in your tone as possible. And this can be hard because if you're a loved one, sometimes the person doesn't want to share that with you because they feel like it's a burden to you or it's, it's going to scare you. Um, but if you're able to get them to open up and talk with you and, and say what they're feeling, there's kind of two different types of suicidal thinking. We, we call the one passive suicidal ideation because it's that the person is thinking about death, like I'd rather not be here, it'd be easier if I just got run over by a bus, um, it'd be just easier on everyone if I died. So, so it's kind of, there's no actual plan to harm themselves, it's just kind of thinking a lot about death. And this is, you see really commonly in depression, you see a lot of this. Um, and then there's another side of suicidality, which is more active suicidal ideation which really just means that the person is actively thinking about a way to end their life. Like, this is what I would do. I would get a gun. I would have a knife. I would take pills. This is what my funeral would be like. This is what I want to put my affairs in order. I want to write a note to explain how I feel. Um, so in terms of what you can do to help if you're hearing these things, um, if you're hearing anything on the active side, like I have a plan, this is what I'm going to do, I'm writing a letter, I'm taking care of my finances, that person needs care emergently. So that's the person that really needs to get into see a psychiatrist or to go to the emergency room right away. So if you're hearing that kind of thing, don't wait. You really need to get help right away. If you're healing the more passive part, which is kind of I, I don't feel like living anymore, I just think everything is terrible. Um, this person still needs help, but maybe not quite as urgently. So if you can get an appointment in the next you know, couple days or a week, um, you're probably um, okay. However, I want to just say, the person might just say life is not worth living, and if you're a loved one, they may not share with you the other stuff. So I think the bottom line is if you're feeling uncomfortable and you're worried about this, and you're worried they have thoughts or death or dying, um, ask them first of all to share with you but then maybe they won't share completely so just you know the next step is well how can I help you know are, do you have a psychiatrist you're working with do you have a therapist you're working with are you sharing this with them do you you know do you want me to call and share this with them um, if they do have a psychiatrist or a therapist they're working with and that person doesn't know that this is going on it would be helpful for you to share that with them so sometimes people get confused about HIPAA and what kinds of information can be shared. If you are a concerned loved one and you're concerned they're suicidal, you can always provide information to their doctor or their therapist. Now the doctor or therapist may not be able to speak to you about that person, but you can always give that information. So if you're worried about this and they're not talking to their doctor or their therapist, I think you should feel free to reach out to them and let them know what's going on and then they can kind of professionally take it to the next step and figure out what to do next. Um, and if you're really worried and you're hearing these plans to hurt yourself, then that's when things get more urgent. So I hope this has been helpful. Um, if you would like more information, please see our contact information below. Thanks. Bye-bye.